Hello and welcome to the interview on France 24, brought to you today from the European Commission studios in Brussels. My guest today is Tonio Borg, the EU Commissioner for Health and Consumer Policy. He's a former Interior and Foreign Minister of Malta, and he was appointed to this job in late November. Barely three months into it, he has a major food scandal on his hands. Horse meat mislabeled as beef, has been found in more than a dozen European countries, and the scandal has brought in food giants such as Nestle. Commissioner Borg, thank you very much yes. for being on the interview. Whose fault is it that consumers ate this horse meat thinking it was beef? Fault is of those who uh, mislabel things, because it's not a question of absence of legislation. We do have legislation on labeling. All indications are that this is not a food safety issue, but it's an issue of deception. Someone tried and succeeded in deceiving consumers by labeling beef as, uh, by labeling horse meat as if it was beef. This is in violation of EU laws, and I must say that it was a member state which discovered this fraud, because they do random inspections. In this case, Ireland organized a inspection, a random inspection, of the cheapest kind of hamburgers, and that's how this issue was discovered. So there is legislation, there are the instruments, the enforcement is in the hands of the member states. We do uh, monitor this, the enforcement agencies uh, themselves. So it's not a question of absence of legislation or lack of commitment. It was an abuse of the laws which we have. But before we get more to enforcement, uh, are you willing to point the finger at any particular company then for this fraud? When this issue arose, I said, uh, all the countries through which this meat product passed through and all the companies which dealt with it are liable to suspicion. I must say that I'm very satisfied by the investigations, criminal and otherwise, which were uh, made by the member states, and some results have already uh, emerged. What would your message be, though, to people who've actually eaten uh, this meat? I mean, what, what should they do? First of all, I must say that the internal market is something of a cornerstone in the European Union, something very positive. But when you have an internal market, these incidents happen as well. And when this incident happens, then it has cross-border effect as well. I must say that it is not a health issue, so consumers must be satisfied that till now at least there are no indications that it is a health issue. It's a question of deception of the consumer. Action has been taken and further action will be taken depending on the investigation. Who, who should consumers turn to though, I mean, in this incredibly complex food chain? The enforcement of legislation is in the hands of the member states uh, themselves. What I would like to convey as a message is that the Commission, um, at the behest of uh, member states, uh, convened a meeting and uh, certain actions were proposed uh, regarding further enforcement, which have been approved uh, by the member states, which would be an increased inspection as regards the animal species of meat products. So it's all in the hands of the food standards agencies of the individual of, states? Of the, but it, it, uh, all EU legislation is enforced in this way. It depends on the member states. Of course, if the member states do not enforce repeatedly, of course, then the Commission can take, can take action. And we do also have an inspectorate to inspect the inspectors mostly on food safety uh, issues. D don't you believe, though, it would require a massive increase in resources to be able to stop this kind of fraud going on because when it crosses the border you need a lot more inspectors? Uh, the fact that there's an infringement implies that there is a law, um, which is why we do not have in the Commission an army of inspectors and, uh, and police or wardens to implement EU legislation, not only in this portfolio but in any portfolio. It's the member states who are responsible, which does not mean that the Commission doesn't have a role uh, to help the member states to enforce legislation. In fact, on this question of labelling, um, uh, we have taken action at the behest also of, uh, of the member states and we are going to finance up to the tune of 75% the inspections which will, and the tests which will take place in the month of March, both as regards the animal species of the meat uh, product through DNA testing and also as to whether there is the substance butte in the horse meat which might be found which should not be in the, in the, in the food chain. So it will be both 
a question of labouring, but also a question of uh, assuring that there is no food safety issue. When you're saying you're financing this inspection, does that mean you're effectively paying the national food okay. standards exactly. authorities? So 25% will be forked out by the member states and 75% by the Commission. Right. For a uh, period of one month, which could be extended to three months. Mm. And there we could have a wider view of uh, what actually happened and how this can not happen again. Some of uh, the members of the European Parliament say that the food industry in the nation states can't be trusted to inspect their own products, that this scandal has shown that. Uh, isn't it time perhaps for independent health inspectors to be sent in to create a body of independent inspectors the that are not subject the to the member states? inspectors of the member states are independent. So it is true that the food companies themselves have their own inspections, but then it's the member states who also enforce it. I mean, Ireland's agency was an agency which actually uh, discovered this, uh, this fraud. Um, and then there's the commission to inspect the inspectors and to see that the inspection system works well as well and to assist the member states in this enforcement. But the fact that the law has been infringed doesn't mean that it is not being enforced. I mean, the same way as the law against the robbery uh, is infringed every day. It doesn't mean that it's a bad law or that it is not enforced enough. It is impossible to uh, assure a perfect system in an internal market system. I must say that it still is one of the best uh, systems in the world, our system of the European Union for food safety. Um, how would this uh, um, labelling work? I mean, if, if, you, if you want to know exactly what's coming in across a border when you have this complex system of subsidiaries, does that mean a lot more labelling every time a product crosses a border? Double labelling? How does that now work? The labelling legislation as is, is as regards the animal species of the meat uh, product. Um, as regards food imported from outside the European Union, there are inspections which take place in the slaughterhouses or in the, in the food manufacturing uh, uh, companies on a random basis. It is impossible to check each and every piece of uh, meat product which is imported. I mean, here we are talking of millions of meat products which uh, are circulated within the European Union or are imported in the European Union. But it's a good inspection system, which doesn't mean that every now and then we don't have incidents of this kind. Uh, thank God that it is not a food issue, because in the past we had incidents which were worse than this. I'm not saying that this is not a bad incident. It's a bad incident as regards consumer confidence and consumer rights. But it has not had health issues uh, related to it, uh, till now at least. I want to ask you about the food industry warning of the cost of more labelling. Uh, presumably they'll be putting pressure on the European Commission to keep costs down. Now, on the labelling, we already have satisfactory legislation. Um, uh, the question of enforcement is another thing, but on legislation it's satisfactory on labelling, that you need labelling on the animal species. Then there's another issue which has also been discussed uh, recently as to whether one should have labelling for the place of origin on the meat product, which is totally unrelated to this incident, because this incident would have happened even if we had legislation in place as regards the place of origin. In other words, if the meat had come in from outside the, the EU? Or from, from, or from which country inside the European Union uh, that it originated from. So the, the priority is actually to clear things up within the internal market rather than uh, looking at outside? Exactly. No, no. Even as regards meat products imported from outside, the testing which I uh, referred to, which is being financed by the Commission, would cover also a 30% uh, as regards meat products coming from outside the European Union as well. What I was referring to is a movement or a proposal which the Commission is discussing as to whether, besides the animal species uh, testing and labelling, there should be also a labelling of place of origin. Now, this applies to fresh beef today. It will, uh, in the very near future, extend to other fresh meat products. The question is, should it be extended to all kinds of meat products, even processed foods? And here we are uh, waiting for an impact assessment study report, which will be out um, by the end of summer, I hope. So that we'll see whether we to propose legislation in this regard, after consulting all the stakeholders, NGOs, and even the industry as well. That will but be an this, expensive but, process, presumably. But, but this, now there is a movement. There are those in favour, even amongst the member states, there are those in favour and against. But this question is completely unrelated to this incident. Even if we had the place of origin legislation in place, 
This was a question of labeling, false labeling of the ingredients. So it would have taken place just the same. I understand. Um, I do have a question for you um, about the the role of uh, of um, enforcement and penalties, because this is uh, not the first uh, crisis. There have been so many uh, crises involving animal feed and other things in the last decade. Um, it suggests that penalties are just not uh, serious enough to deter companies well, from with, infringement. When it's a directive, usually the Commission directs in the directive, which is approved then by Parliament and by the Council, that appropriate uh, criminal sanctions or other sanctions have to be in place. Then it's up to the Member States to interpret that, unless it's a regulation, in which case then it's directly enforceable and uh, there is no room for, for manoeuvring in this case. So it's again but judging from states. what Ministers have said that when they will find the culprits, and it would seem that the culprits now are being found, they would impose uh, harsh sanctions. It would seem that there are these uh, sanctions in place and they can, be, they can be applied. But the message which I wanted and the information which I wanted to convey is that, contrary to popular belief, uh, the enforcement is mostly in the hands of the enforcement agencies of the Member States. The Commission does not have its own enforcers. What we do is monitoring the enforcers in the, in, in, in the Member States themselves. Okay, so people should be aware of the Commission's yes, overall exactly. role. We'll have to end it there. Thank you so much you. for your time, uh, Commissioner Tony Borg, Commissioner for uh, Health and Consumer Policy. That's all we have time for on France 24. <laughs>